Welcome back to the workshop for another update on the Gremlin build. And we've got a good bit done this week, I think, at least finishing off quite a bit of the engine compartment. As you can see, we now have inner fender wells. We have some details back on the firewall. And we also went ahead and put in some marker lights. So starting up front here, I went ahead and just put in some amber marker lights here. Um, they're just bare LEDs right now. I think I'll cover them with some lenses, uh, just with some acrylic or something that'll cover these for the lenses. Now, that is creating more wiring coming out of the back uh, uh, of the of the front of the car, of the front end of the car. So we've got, we're going to have headlight wiring. We're going to have uh, the marker light wiring. We have the servo wiring. We have all kinds of wiring coming out of the front of the car. So I thought what we would do is go ahead and get the inner fender wells in. So then we can do some wiring looms that'll run down the fender wells back through the firewall into the uh, interior part of the car where we'll have all of our electronics, controllers, all that kind of stuff will be back hidden in the interior. But in order to do that, I needed these inner fender wells in order to, you know, run the wiring like you would across them, along them, and into the firewall. So what I did is I used some uh, some inner fender wells that I had from a previous project. I can't, I think these were for a 4Runner. Don't quote me on that. I think it was for a, a RC 4-wheel drive 4Runner. They were the, the Lexan um, inner fenders. So I just kind of cut those up and used some styrene to make them form into what we needed need for this project. We'll take the body off and we'll take a closer look at them so you can see exactly what they look like and how we did that. Um, but I also added a few details to the firewall. I think this MSD box is probably, this ignition box is probably going to have to get scooted over a little bit. It ended up behind uh, the inner fender well. I don't like that so much. There'll be wiring coming off of that also. And then I scaled down. I think I had showed you guys the brake booster we originally did. I think I have it laying around here somewhere. Let's see. Can I find it? That I, I still have not cleaned uh, my desk. Uh, let's. Oh, here it is, right here. Yeah, it's hard to find anything on this desk. It's it's pretty much a disaster. But I had printed this out before. It was way too big, so I scaled it down, gave it a quick paint job, and put it back here on the firewall, which meant I had to put in a notch into this fender well. So I just kind of boxed in a notch right here. Um, otherwise, it wouldn't fit. And I think that's going to work okay, especially once everything's painted. I think it'll look all right. Um, but we'll take a closer look at that again when I pull this up, when I pull the body off. Um, but I really like how, now I painted these black. I do want to point out all this. So the body, the core support, the firewall, inner fender wells, all that, that's all going to be body color. I went ahead and just painted these black because they were clear because it shows how well, it kind of shows off the engine. I think it really kind of puts that engine there sitting there like a diamond in a, in a ring. You know, it just kind of, I don't know, it, it makes it stand out and look real. I, I think it even makes the, um, the plug wires and everything look better. And it's going to definitely give us a good platform. These, these fender wells are really wide in here, uh, just because of the way the body matches up to the chassis. So it gives us a lot of room to put detail. Like I said, the wiring looms and things of that sort, uh, along these fender wells it gives us a lot of room to do that. Anyway, I think it, I think it's going to look really nice. Of course, as always, let me know what you think down in the comment sections. Is there something you do a little different? Um, is there something else you want to see in the engine compartment? Cause I think we're going to pretty much, we're going to call this pretty much done. We'll end up adding a few more details. Like I want to enlarge this air filter and stuff like that, but we're going to call it pretty much done and move back up front to the, to the grill and the lights and everything next week. So let me know is there, if there's anything else before we kind of wrap this up that you'd want to see in this engine compartment. Um, but I'll tell you what, let me go ahead and, oh, I know what I wanted to mention. You notice there's still a hood prop here. Um, that I did actually put, and we'll look at this here in a second, but there's magnets back on these hinges. We had talked about adding the magnets to hold the hood open. Well, they're just not, I mean, just not quite strong enough. They're trying but not quite strong enough to hold the hood open. If I tilt the hood back just, to, or the body back just a little bit, it holds it up, up fine. But with the level, just not quite enough. So I think, I thought about trying to double up the magnets, but there's just not enough room. I think I'll probably end up adding a spring back there to help, uh, to help, just like a helper spring, um, to keep it open. But, uh, we'll look at that. In fact, I'll tell you what, let's look at it right now. See if I can get this off. Flip it over. Hold on just a second. Let me move this some stuff around for us. And if I open the hood, let's see. How can I show you guys? There. You should be able to see those magnets stacked up right there. Let me get some light in here. Sorry about the camera book. There we go. So those are the magnets that should be holding that's, that just are not. See how they separate when I close? When I close the hood, when I open the hood, they come together. And they, they, they're almost holding. So I think just a little spring... 
I think what I'll do is maybe I'll run a spring from uh, from the arm to the the screw here, or maybe to maybe to here or somewhere. I don't know. I'll, maybe I'll add something to add a spring into just a helper spring to keep that open. But anyways, let's go ahead and head back over here to the fender wells. So this was the first one that we did, uh, which was pretty straightforward. So I just had to cut down. Uh, let's see if I flip it this way. You can kind of see. You can see it's a. Uh, it's a regular RC four-wheel drive inner fender that I cut down quite a bit. It was quite a bit wider. I think this was actually for the back wheels, for the for the back of a forerunner. I, I really want to say. Anyways, I just cut it down to what we needed, and then made cut this styrene. You can see how it has some notches. Cut that to fit that that little spot, and then of course we have the um, core support here. So that's what fits over top of those. Uh, those parts. So it gives us the notches for that. Then I was able to uh, get this correct angle here and then just married the two together, glued them up. Uh, basically, I taped this to the body and then matched this, the fender well itself, up to it, glued it, trimmed it down. Real simple. And then I just added a little piece here. This is the, uh, I don't know, maybe it'll hold a battery or it's going to hold, you know, something, but it basically, it finishes out the inner fender well. Now, the driver's side, like I said, was a little more complicated because we had to put this notch in here. Um, so this is the notch where the master brake cylinder goes. Um, you can see there's going to be a notch here too. Oh, I do want to mention too, in order to make this work, I actually had to move the, uh, the, the shock forward one mount. Um, so that changes the geometry a little bit here of the chassis. Um, cause it used to be in the back hole on the, on the, uh, shock tower. Now it's in the middle hole. I don't think it should be too much of a problem. Um, but that's the only way I could get the notch. Otherwise this notch hit the shock here. Um, but now it fits perfect. In fact, if I set it in here for you, it fits in there nice and snug and perfect. And then we'll mount these, uh, we'll get these mounted up in here. Also the fender wells and all this is going to actually mount here in the chassis and then the body fits over top of it. Um, so those are going to stay here. The firewall just kind of comes in behind it. And then of course it goes right on top of our, our, uh, our bracket we built up front here. And it fit, actually fits pretty snug. In fact, let me put the other one in so you can see how that kind of looks. Uh, we just need to get them mounted up and then that'll have that finished off, which was, a, I'm glad to have this one checked off. I was a little worried about, um, getting these done and making sure they fit. Uh, I actually spent quite a bit of time with these off camera. Uh, just making sure that they that everything fit perfectly. Um, now we do need to still, they're not quite done. I want to mention, if I come in on the side here, you can see we've got a gap between the frame rail and them. So I need to add material just to close out this gap so that from the outside it looks just as good. Um, oh, and I do want to mention, I did add on, on this side, uh, yeah, this side, I tried adding some dimension to it, some some detail. So I added one piece and another piece. Um, and so I think that'll look good too to add another piece um, here, or actually, I'm sorry, it'll be here uh, to fill out that gap. Because if you ever look at an actual inner fender well, they've got all kinds of dips and, and crevices and everything in them. So I just wanted to give it, um, I guess you would say some three-dimensional some three dimensionality to it. Um, but I think they're gonna look pretty good. Let me know what you think. Um, I think we're making good progress. Like I said, I think we're going to basically call the engine compartment done. Uh, there are, like, obviously the wiring and all that we have to do. I'm going to add in a full wiring harness for the motor. Uh, I'm going to hire, uh, I'm going to uh, plumb in some, uh, hosing and stuff. Uh, so we got to add radiator hoses and all that. But I think we're going to set that to the side for now because I want to get back to the body. I'd like to get this body done. So we can start actually getting all this painted up also and then adding the details on top of that. Because I hate to add stuff, um, this not body color on top of here, kind of like the firewall here. You can see the Starbond glue is a little better than I was expecting. So when I went to pop this um, master brake cylinder off, it literally just ripped the styrene right off with it. So I've now I've got a hole in the firewall. I'm going to have to fix all this up. So I'd rather go ahead and get this stuff painted so then I can add the details. But in order to do that, I've got to get the body finished and then paint it all at the same time. I think it's the best plan. Anyways, that gives us, the I think, the engine compartment uh, pretty, I would say 90% done, 85% done. Let me know what you think. Hit that subscribe button if you want to keep up with these. Also keep up with the shorts that we're putting out during the week. Uh, I give daily updates on this all throughout the week through, through the YouTube shorts. 
Um, hit that like button if you would. It really does help. Uh, and leave me those comments, and I will see you guys on Monday. Bye-bye.